If we're asked the question, which whole numbers can be expressed as the difference of two squares in only one way, then we'd be forgiven for assuming that the odd prime numbers, minus the unit 1, is the answer. That answer is surprisingly wrong. It's true that of all of the odd numbers, only the prime numbers can be expressed as the difference of two squares in only one way. But there are also some even numbers too. In terms of the distribution, this even number series is a bit sporadic, like the prime number series. It has quite a few low numbers that become rarer as the numbers get bigger. The even number series that can be expressed as the difference of two squares in only one way starts 4, 8, 12, 20, 28, 44, 52, 68, 76. And it turns out that those numbers correspond directly and exactly to the prime numbers multiplied by 4, with the unit 1 being replaced by the unit 4. Now if we exclude the unit, like we would with the prime numbers, we can see that each of these number series are both infinite, and that no number in the series can be divided evenly by another number in the series. They're effectively a kind of a weird even prime number. Interestingly, 4 is a square unit of the number series, just as 1 is to the prime number series. 8 is the only number in the series that is an odd square number minus another odd square number, in a similar way that 2 is the only even prime number. The numbers are only possible where the two numbers to square are exactly 2 apart, so 8 is 3 squared minus 1 squared, 12 is 4 squared minus 2 squared, and so on. A number like 36 is not a weird even prime, because it's 10 squared minus 8 squared, but it's also 6 squared minus 0 squared. Here I've highlighted the prime numbers multiplied by 4, but there's a cool thing that happens when you multiply the prime series by other numbers. This is the prime number series multiplied by 3, by 5, and 11. The lines initially point down and to the right until they reach a square number, and then they sort of bounce off that number, and they head down and to the left. Now if you multiply by a semi-prime like 15, then the numbers split, and some of the numbers are on the 3 line and some of the numbers are on the 5 line. If you multiply by a number like 35, then all of the numbers split between the lines 5 and 7. A number with only one prime factor, like 27, looks like this. And a more composite number like 24 looks like this. We know that all odd square numbers can definitely be expressed as the difference of squares in at least two ways, because they're all square numbers minus zero squared, and they're also odd numbers, and all odd numbers can be expressed as the difference of two consecutive squares. But if we consider which are the odd square numbers that can only be expressed in exactly two ways, that infinite number series is the square of the prime numbers. These are a sort of a weird square prime. A weird square composite number, like 81, is 9 squared minus 0 squared, and 41 squared minus 40 squared, but it's also 15 squared minus 12 squared. Now, like the prime number series and the weird even prime number series, none of the numbers in this series are evenly divisible by any other number in the series. So if there are other numbers like the prime number series, but there's an extra variable, like squaring the primes or multiplying them by some constant, then potentially the constant could be smaller than 1, and we could generate a set of weird fractional primes. We usually define prime numbers as the whole numbers greater than 1 that can only be divided by itself and 1. Perhaps this definition could be broadened to any infinite number series, where no number in the series can be evenly divided by another number in the series. In this context, the prime numbers become the lowest whole number version of the broader definition.